বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমান ওয়াজ অ্যারেস্টেড বাই দ্য পাকিস্তানি আর্মি ইমিডিয়েটলি আফটার হিজ ডিক্লারেশন অফ ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্স এট দ্য ফার্স্ট আওয়ার অফ দ্য টোয়েন্টি মার্চ নাইনটিন He was taken to Pakistan as a captive and imprisoned there in a small cell for capital punishment until 7th January 1972. Even a grave was dug in front of his cell, but Mujib was fearless. He knew nothing would stop the Bengalis to gain independence. In fact, his name and independence became synonymous. So the whole world was awaiting breathlessly to witness his homecoming. And he had a grand homecoming indeed, narrated by eminent columnist and writer Suad Bodrul Asan. In the evening of 7 January 1972, Bongobuntu left Chaklala Airport in Rawalpindi, from where he would fly to London. Nine months earlier, he was brought to Pakistan as a prisoner with little hope to return, and now he was free to go home. Pakistan, as soon as the PIA aircraft took off, was finally behind him. Early in the morning on 8 January 1972, Bongobuntu arrived at Heathrow Airport. News of Bongobuntu's arrival in London spread quickly. Journalists, the general public, British officials and politicians, and Bengali residents in the city made their way to hotel Claridge's. News bulletins on the BBC and other media organizations made note of the Bongobuntu's arrival in their headlines. By early afternoon, the father of the nation had met the British Prime Minister Edward Heath and leader of the opposition Harold Wilson. Then he called Taka and for the first time since his arrest by the Pakistan army in March, spoke to his family. A long conversation then followed with Prime Minister Tajuddin Ahmed. The conversations with his family and with Tajuddin were emotional affairs, but he now had a clear picture of all that had happened in his absence in Bangladesh. It gave him immense pleasure knowing that he had truly liberated his people. Bongobundu's opening words at a crowded news conference that evening at Claridge's was a touch poetic. He expressed the unbounded joy of freedom achieved by his people in an epic liberation struggle. Bangladesh, he told the crowd, was a reality and would fulfill its obligations as part of the international community. He made it clear that those who were involved in different types of crimes, including genocide, would be trialed by his government. Bongobuntu left London for Dhaka on the 9th January evening in 1972. On the way, he would stop over in Delhi. He was welcomed at Delhi's Palam Airport in the morning of 10 January by President V. V. Giri, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, West Bengal politician Siddhartha Shankar Rai, and the chiefs of the Indian Armed Forces. Bongobuntu stayed in Delhi for about two hours. During this time, he addressed a public rally and mesmerized everyone. There, he wholeheartedly thanked Mrs. Gandhi, the people and the politicians of India for the tremendous help they had provided to Bangladesh and its 10 million refugees. Then, it was on to Dhaka where millions of people had begun to crowd the route that their leader would pass and the racecourse Maidan 
where the leader would deliver a speech before going home. On the tarmac at Tejgao Airport, soldiers of the Indian Army and the Mukti Bahini were on standby to present Bangladesh's president with a guard of honor. Members of the wartime cabinet waited in the winter sun, as did a horde of newsmen. Sometime after 3.30 p.m., the Comet aircraft made available to Bangabundhu by the British government landed in Dhaka. As soon as the doors of the aircraft opened, Bangabundhu appeared. It was clear he had lost weight due to imprisonment for nearly 10 months in a Pakistani prison. A big smile appeared on his face as he swept back his hair with his right hand. Prime Minister Tajuddin Ahmed then moved forward and buried his head in his leader's chest. Both men broke down. The tears soon led to moist eyes in nearly everyone else present around them. Once the formalities at the airport were completed, the father of the nation climbed on a board of an open truck. With the Mujib Nagar government figures, and the student leaders crowding around him. He headed for the race course. The two-mile stretch of road would take the procession almost three hours to cover. At the race course, Bongobontu wept, remembering the sacrifices the Bengalis had made in the war against Pakistan. He told how the military junta had tried to intimidate him during his trial. He said, I told them I'm a Bengali and a Muslim who only dies once. I would walk the gallows with head held high. The father of the nation remarked, the Bengalis had become the golden children of the golden Bengal. Quoting the poet Ramidra Thakur, who once had complained that the people of Bengal had remained mere Bengalis, but were yet to become true human beings. Mujib told the jubilant crowd that the poet had been proved wrong. Come back, O poet, he intoned dramatically, and see how your Bengalis are today transformed into worthy men. Moments later, as dusk and a winter haze settled over Dhaka, Bongobuntu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman made his way back to his family who had been waiting for him at the house in Thanmondi Road 32 where they had been kept under house arrest by the Pakistan army throughout the course of the war of liberation.